So somebody already said how many coconuts was. Well, there, there's actually an infinite number of solutions, right? Because this is a modular problem. And you can go through that. But the easiest one, like they, if you watch that second video, was 3121. 3,121 <coughs> coconuts on the island. And uh, might as well do that. So did you get my descriptor of it that if we have a pile of coconuts and then I divide it up into one, two, three, four, five, and then there's one extra coconut? Right. And so what happens is this guy hides his pile. He gives the monkey his coconut and then he takes the left over four and he makes that into the smaller pile that's left for the next guy who wakes up and does the, the problem. And so visually it looks like this. And so one of the ways you could look at this is to say the larger amount that you see was, well, how could I have done that? Well, I could take the smaller amount that I see, which is the smaller one after he's done everything, and how would I get everything back? Well, if I would take the smaller one and break it up into four even pieces, the original had five of those. So that means that there was five-fourths of that plus the one that went to the monkey. And so that's a recurrence relation. That's one of the things about applications. You know, 8.1 is about can you study problems that tell you next things are based upon a function of old things. And a lot of times we can model an awful lot of things like that. If we would sit there and say things like, I need you to build a bit string that never has one one <clears throat> in it. And you would think, well, how could I do that? Well, what you would do is, well, I'm going to start with small bit strings and make bigger bit strings and make sure I never have a 1-1 one, one in it. And so you could go through that particular process. And for this one, if we look at it, this is a recurrence relation. That would solve, if we would go through this, it would model this particular how do I share coconuts? Or how not share these coconuts keep getting cut down and cut down and cut down. It's like, well, how does this problem actually work? Well, it works. A recurrence relation could model the event that's happening. Other recurrence relations that we could do on a problem like this for 8.1 would be, again, what if I wanted to have a problem that... If we're going to be using recurrence relations, another example uh, for all of these is I want to have some sort of a sub n which counts the number of ways for an object of n and I'm going to get on this side is going to be equal to some sort of expression involving older values. In other words, what are we talking about? We're talking about a sub n minus 1, a sub n minus 2 a sub n minus 3, a sub n minus k, however many older values you want. We have some older values that go together to make this. The coconut problem, what was the only older value you need, needed? a sub n minus 1. All right, Fibonacci numbers, what do you need? So n minus 1 and n minus 2. An example like that, let's say the bit strings. Uh, let's say bit strings of length n with no 1, 1 in them. I'm never going to allow you to use a 1, 1. Okay, and so a sub n is going to be equal to, it's the number of bit strings with no one one in them. And I need a formula here. So I'm going to build a bit string from, from smaller ones. All right, if I was going to build a bit string, which is a bunch of zeros and ones, what's the very first bit possibilities that you could put down? You could put down a what? A zero 
or you could put down a 1, right? And so what could happen here? For this a sub n, it could start off with, I could start with a 0. If I start it with a 0, is there any issue? No, there's no, there's not even the number 1 here, right? Uh, if I start it with a 0, though, how many bits are left over? How many bits have I used? I've used, yeah, so there's n minus 1 left, right? So if this thing is supposed to be of length n, right, here's, I start it with a 0, and now there's going to be n minus 1 bits left over. Now, if I start it with a 0 and it has no 1, 1, for these things that I have not written down, what do I definitely know about this? There cannot be a what? These don't have a 1, 1 in them. I'm only, I can start with a 0, and then for the rest of them, I'm not allowed to have a 1, 1. Well, who would count that? Our function, right? And so this would be simply a sub n minus 1. What is that going to do? It's going to count all bit strings that don't have a 1, 1. So these can't have a 1, 1 in it. And who counts that? The function. I don't have it yet, but if I did have it, it would count it. Or I could start with a 1, but now I have a problem. If I started with a 1, consider the following bit string. 1, 0, 1. Does that have a 1, 1 in it? No, there's no 1, 1 beside it. 1, 0, 1 does not have a 1, 1 beside it. But if I put a 1 in front of it, would that bit string have a 1, 1? Yes, and so that'd be a problem. I would never allow this thing to say, I, I can't, this guy, if I start with a 1, the next guy is not supposed to be a 1 or else I'd have a problem. Well, how would you do that? Well, the only way I can never count that is if I actually start off with, start, don't start off with a 1, start off with a 1, 0. Is that ever possible, is that possible to ever be a 1, 1 if it starts off with a 1, 0? The answer is no. But on the other hand, how many bits are left over? There's n minus 2. And the rest of these guys, so this is safe, this is safe. And the rest of these guys are where the can't have 1, 1 exist. And who counts that? A n minus 2. Is that the only way to build out? This is how I would build these bit strings. I would say, how do I make any bit string that does not have a 1, 1? Here's how I do it. I can start it with a 0. But then whatever comes next cannot have a 1, 1. Well, how could you do that? Well, I'm going to start it with a a 1, 0, and then whatever comes next. So it's, it's a choice. You could write a 0, or you could write a 1, 0. And then you just keep going back between those two things. Write a 0, or write a 1, 0. Write a 0, or write a 1, 0. If you just keep going back between these two things, you're guaranteed you're never going to have a 1, 1. So this is my constructive process. Write a 0, or write a 1, 0. All right, this is a counting problem. What does the or mean? Add. So, all right. So a sub n is equal to. How many ways could you write the number zero? One. And, right, after I write the number zero, and I follow it up with all the ways to handle the n minus one. But who counts that? a sub n minus one. Or, how many ways can you write the number 1, 0? 1. And you now finish up with the a sub n minus 2. So that's how I construct these. How could I make something of length n? I would write a 0 and then finish off the next n minus 1. Or I would write a 1, 0 and 
then finish off the n minus two bit strings. In other words, this thing becomes a tree. Right? You just simply go around and this will count all the possible bit strings that are going to be allowed. All right, what does that look like? That means a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. Who does this look like? It looks like a, it's Fibonacci-like, so this is called Lucas. The Fibonacci-like sequence. The difference is, what do I not yet have? So this is my recurrence relation. This is the inductive part. What am I missing? The basis. So this is the recurrence relation. What I'm missing is, what's the basis? All right, fine. Uh, for n equal to 1, what do your strings look like? If you have one bit, what are your strings? Zero or one. For n equal to two, what are the strings? Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. What is a sub one? How many of these strings of length one do not have a one, one? Both of them, so there's two. What's a sub two? For all those strings that you see, how many do not have a 1-1? One, one? Three of them. Right? That one, that one, and that one do not have a, are not 1-1. One, one. So there's three possibilities. And so what have, we, what have we done? This entire problem of counting the bit strings has become a sub 1 is 2, a sub 2 is 3, and a sub n is a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. So what would your sequence be? Two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, etc. And so this was one, two, three, four, five, six. What's the next guy? Thirty-four. That's bit strings of length seven, right? So what have I just counted? For example, this one. This says that there are, this box says that there are 34 bit strings of length 7 have no 1-1 one, one in them. That's what that says. Could you count the number of 100? What would I have to do? Do the sequence until I'm out to 100. How many bit strings of length 1,000? I'd have to do the sequence out to 1,000. How many bit strings of length a million? Have to do the sequence out to a million. How many people start to think that's a little annoying, that I've had to keep add, 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 add until I get out to a million just to tell you what that one number is? All right, again, a recurrence relation. What's nice about recurrence relations is that they're good for modeling. It's doing what we normally do. We take old things to make new things. The problem with open form like this is the following. If I wanted to get A1000, I need A1, A2, all the way up to A999. I need to generate all those. On the other hand, if you have a closed function, right, where it was just simply a sub n is some sort of function of n, it's just simply plug in the n, you would immediately get the number. There, you don't have to generate any of the intermediate steps. I would just need, what is the closed solution? How do I immediately jump to the answer? Okay, finding these closed functions Finding this is solving a recurrence relation.